guys and welcome back. Today I'm working on a watercolor and gouache painting and it felt really good to get back into using watercolor. It's been a little bit like maybe a little over a week since I've done a painting like this and I missed it but today I combined several things that I've been wanting to try more and get better at and figure out how I like it and how I want to move forward with it and uh, the first one is that I want to get a little bit better at not needing line art as a crutch when I first start out. And I adore good strong line art. Line art is always going to be something that I really strive for in my pieces or at least use it as a strong design element. But today and in future pieces I want to be able to get to a point that I don't need it. It's something that I can build up as I'm working on the piece concurrently with the painting process rather than it being set in stone from the very beginning. And I think that that's something that I'm beginning to feel like I'm ready to outgrow uh, simply because when I start off at the very beginning with everything perfectly outlined, it doesn't give me a chance to change things or ad lib things as I'm going. And since everything is perfectly line arted already, I don't get the chance to define things through color or through shading and through the actual paint itself. And if I allow myself to do that, it means that I can have the line art be much more varied in the future. I can put it where it needs to be and let it be a lot lighter than where it is in other places because it doesn't need to be as strong there. And I think that's the problem is that when I'm doing line work entirely first, I can't always anticipate how it's going to be affected as I paint it. So a lot of times I will be a lot more heavy handed than I would necessarily had been if I knew how I was going to end up painting it exactly. And by no means do I mean that I'm going to stop altogether ever doing completely line arted pieces before I start painting them because I still love that. I love that process, but I would like to get practice with something like this where I can feel confident with that and then maybe get to a point where I am infusing the two techniques together and I have something that feels a lot more of a marriage between the two things that I like and I can take the pros of them and take away some of the cons I think. And the way that I started this one was pretty much exactly the same as I did with my last mermaid piece and that's where I transferred it using a very thin colored pencil first. So normally I would use my light box and I would transfer it in ink but since I want to get away from that, I used this colored pencil, which is again, very light. So it disappears in areas that I end up changing my mind on, but it's dark enough that I can still see where it is. And it is a colored pencil, so it's not made of graphite like normal pencil. So it doesn't get blended into the paint as I'm using it, which is definitely a problem when you're using normal pencils. You can see that gray getting into your paint and really desaturating it. And yeah, this pencil is great because it does, it stays there. It doesn't get mixed into the paint, like I mentioned. So it's very clean and crisp and clear and it does not interfere with the paint after I put it down there. So I've been really loving that technique for a way for me to see where I want to make sure that the lines are, but it allows me to adapt it as I'm working. And I tried really hard today to focus on creating very soft, light layers of paint that I would paint over and over until I got to the level that I wanted. I do have a problem sometimes where I will go in almost, almost to that final level that I want, that final value, or I'll try to get that final saturation. And with watercolor, you're really missing out if you just try to jump to the final end of it. There is such a beauty to glazing. When you glaze, you get a very deep look to it. You can see the way that the light is hitting different layers of paint and it's just really gorgeous effect. And when you are utilizing that, you can get a lot more saturation than if you try to jump right to the end. If you're having problems with saturation with your watercolors, try layering that same, even just that same color or multiple different colors over on top of each other. And eventually you'll get you'll be able to get a much more saturated color than if you had tried to go in with just one layer. And that's what I wanted to focus on today. I wanted to reel it back in and be a lot more wary of each step that I was taking and a very light handed approach to it. And overall, I think that I was a lot more satisfied and happy with this piece, taking my time and being very thoughtful with it and also building up the levels and the layers to a point that I felt a lot more comfortable with. I knew exactly what I was getting into and I wasn't suddenly in the deep end of something being too dark. I was able to see it coming and fix it. 
and I liked this approach. I think that it's something that I can get better at is being more thoughtful about each layer and being a lot lighter handed with them. And just a quick beginner watercolor tip. You want to make sure that the layers are completely dry before you put a new layer on top of it. If it's only partially dry, it can mess up what would have been a really beautiful flat wash or graded wash. So if it's not completely dry, it can ruin the work that you put down already. And that is such a sad feeling when you put something down that you thought was dry and then it wasn't. So I always do a little test where I'll just touch it really quick and if it feels cool to the touch it's probably still wet but you'll see me pull out this little green tool pretty frequently and it's just an embossing gun and you can use one of those or you can use a hair dryer and I'll have a link to the embossing gun that I use down in the description but I use that thing all the time I make sure that I dry out the paint before I move on to the next layer or the next object. I do it pretty frequently too, just to make sure that I'm not about to paint next to another color that's going to bleed into each other. That is always a little bit frustrating, but I do just make sure that I do a quick pass to make sure that everything is dry and then I add new layers on top of it. And these tools are usually either you have something that will work already at home or they're pretty cheap and they really do speed up the process of watercolors and it makes it, a lot more enjoyable for me at least, where I don't have to sit around and wait for paint to dry. And I'll have a link in the description to every tool that I'm using and all the paints and everything so you can see exactly how I create this piece, but I was really enjoying using gouache in this painting. Watercolor and gouache just go so well together. It's because they behave very similarly and they reactivate with water and they just really do feel like a very happy marriage between the two different mediums. And I've been wanting to use gouache more with my watercolors. I, I know that it would help me add more elements that I can add as I'm painting rather than things that, again, need to be perfectly line arted from the beginning or planned out. And it really helped me fix a mistake in this painting today. I painted out her eyes, her iris and her pupils, and I wasn't entirely happy with the placement of her pupils, it didn't really match the sketch and it didn't have that same far off gaze that I wanted. And I tried to fix it with watercolor and I tried to fix it with the ink again, but it just was, it was not coming together the way that I wanted it to. And that was an integral part to this piece. So I needed to make sure that it was what I wanted. And that's when I decided to bring out the gouache and fix her eyes. And I am really happy with it. Cause honestly, I feel like I, I could have gotten a similar look with watercolor if I had planned it better from the beginning. But the fact that I'm looking at it at the end and I don't feel like that is a negative point to it. The fact that I had to fix it with gouache definitely tells me that I'm beginning to get a little bit better at knowing how to use it and how I want to use it and how to incorporate it so that it doesn't feel like this sore thumb of something that had to be fixed and I sort of patched it together. But ultimately I felt like it, it meshes well with the overall design. Um, but I did just paint over her iris and her pupil and I gave it that very glassy hazy look and I added a few extra colors in there to give it this refracting kind of a look to it. And I also at one point had outlined her eyes in black and it was just way too thick and way too dark for this piece. There was nowhere else that had that value to it and that harshness to it because I didn't end up adding almost any line work anywhere else. It was very, very sparingly and light handed. So that part felt really just very glaringly different from the rest. So that's where I used some more gouache. I just had this dark green that I covered up that black and I was able to, again, give it this almost hazy look to it, kind of like in the uh, eyes themselves. So I was happy that it was something that I made a slight mistake, but I was able to fix it in a way that I think it looks like something that I would have planned out from the very beginning. And you'll see that I tried to do a mini painting below this with a little leaf in it. And I've been wanting to break the mold of the defines of the painting itself. I want to add more interesting icons and compositional elements like this. And this was my first step in that direction. And I ended up deciding to cut that bottom part off. I think that there were a few things that I could have done better to make it feel a lot more impactful and to flow better with the piece itself. I wish that I had made the leaf a little bit smaller and maybe maybe not even colored it in. I'm not sure. I think that I would have wanted to make sure that it wasn't quite so eye-catching, I think. And I would have also not painted around it in this like 
mini picture frame. I wish that I had just left it simply an icon of a leaf underneath her, but that's okay because I am really glad that I experimented with that. I learned some of the things that I don't like about it and it was very easy to just trim that part of it off and make sure that it still had a very sharp and clean painting above it. And that is it for today's painting. As usual, I do have her available at my shop. So if you'd like to own an original, I've got a link in the description as well as in the end card. And I do post every Wednesdays and Saturdays. So if you'd like to see more art videos, hit subscribe and that bell button so you can get notifications on when that happens. But yeah, I will see you guys at my next one.